local Big 2 News. Your forecast first. Good evening. I'm Chief Forecaster Horace Brown. It's been a cold and wet election day, and the rain continues to move out of the basin. We will keep the chance for showers in place at least through midnight. We'll have that end, though, tomorrow morning, 7 p.m. Uh, actually, that should be midnight at about uh, 5, 10, uh, 5, 50 percent chance of rain. Wind chill about 38 is 7 a.m., and then by noon tomorrow, we'll have a temperature of about 51. So we are looking for some cold air to stick around. Let's start local Big 2 News right now. Now, live from your local election headquarters, this is a special edition of Big Two News. Well, the polls are closed. Results are rolling in for 12 hours today from 7 to 7. West Texans casting ballots in this November election and across the state. Texans deciding the fate of many of our elected official positions in one state proposition. One West Texas town will find out soon if alcohol will be sold in their city. Seminole voters decide to stay dry or go wet. Good evening, I'm Stephanie Sobic. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tyler Thomas, and thanks for joining us for this special edition of Local Big 2 News at 10. So will the governor's seat go blue or stay red? Looks like Abbott has been declared the winner and will be Texas's new governor-elect. After months of campaigning, the hard work did pay off, and it looks like right now 44%. Here's the official numbers. Those are the precincts reporting. Greg Abbott getting 60% of the vote, but Wendy Davis has conceded this race. Greg Abbott, once again, is our governor-elect. That's right, Wendy Davis giving a concession speech just under an hour ago. I believe we had a chance to catch up with her and ask her about the campaign and what's next for her. Of Senate District 10. Thank you for giving me the privilege of a lifetime. <sighs> you. And that once again was Wendy Davis. Moving on to the second in command for the state this election for Lieutenant Governor. That's right. This was a little tighter race than the governor. The two front runners, Dan Patrick and Letitia Vandepute. You can see the results right there. Dan Patrick, 59%. Vandepute coming in at 38%. Now on to the attorney general race. Look at the numbers here. Ken Paxton, the Republican over Sam Houston, the Democrat. Paxton with 60%. Sam Houston, 37%. All right, we have more results. They keep flowing into our newsroom. We have up-to-date results as many important state races are up for grabs. That's right. We are your local election headquarters. So settle in. We're bringing, in you, bringing you the latest throughout the show tonight. And as she said, results continue to come in. And you can see them at the bottom of your screen as well as on the air here tonight. All right, let's move on to the U.S. Senate seat. That is the three contenders there, Cornyn, Amamil, and Paddock. Senator John Cornyn is the winner. 45% precincts reporting. He has 63% of the vote, taking the lead over David Amamil. And just minutes ago, Senator John Cornyn sending out a message directly to the voters who elected him to another term. Saying, quote, in part, I am humbled by the trust that my fellow residents have placed in me by voting for me. Now on to the other side of the building, so to speak, the U.S. House of Representatives. That's right, Conaway versus Lane. Conaway, a Permian High School graduate. And I believe we have the latest numbers here. Mike Conaway, the Republican with the big lead, 91% over Ryan Lang. Ryan Lang sitting at 9% tonight. And I believe he actually sent us a statement regarding his big win tonight. That's right, and it says part in part, quote, I am honored that the residents of the 11th district have chosen me to represent them in the 114th Congress. There is no greater honor. I am proud to have the support of the hardworking men and women in the towns and cities that make up the 11th district. Literally, these statements just coming into our <laughs> newsroom. We are reading them, folks, as we get them tonight. Now, moving on to U.S. District 19. Much of this district in Big Spring, but also covers Lubbock and Abilene. That's right. A tough race here between Randy Nagabauer and Neil Marchbanks. 
Nagabauer, the incumbent for U.S. Congressman District 19. There are the numbers. Nagabauer, 77 percent. Neil Marchbanks, the Democrat, 18 percent. So Nagabauer wins. It looks like he would stay in office for another four years. And U.S. Congressman Randy Nagabauer taking in the office again once tonight. So we have a statement from him about his big win. Picking up some congressional seats in the Republican Party. And we're also picking up some Senate seats. We're still waiting to see whether the uh, Republicans will control the Senate or not. Now, it was not so victorious for Neil March Banks, Nagabauer's contender. But despite his loss, he tells local Big Two News he's proud of his campaign. Uh, it's been fun. It's, uh, it's actually good to get it over with. Come down to the last day and see some results. I would have preferred to have won, but uh, doesn't look like that's in the cards. All right, moving on. Supreme Court place seven. Jeff Boyd, the Republican. Gina Benavidez, the Democrat. You saw the numbers there. And on to Supreme Court place eight. Phil Johnson, the Republican, with the lead over Roberto Colch. 80% over 11% in that race. All right, let's turn it back over to some state races affecting our area. Yeah, State Senate Kel Seliger and Stephen Geisen. Kel Seliger is the incumbent in this race for the State Senate District 31. He took office in March 2004. And if we take a look at the latest numbers, looks like Seliger in the lead here, 90% Republican and Stephen Gibson pulling in 10%. Looks like Seliger will take the win in this one. And I believe we have some sound. We made a lot of progress in areas of public education this last session. And right now, that's my focus, building on the success of House Bill 5, working with all of the superintendents and the teachers in this district that I work with, and seeing what we can do to make some improvements. What changes do you do? And hearing from Kel Seliger there. And actually, I think, Justin, we do have Greg Abbott, the governor-elect, taking the podium. Let's hear from the governor-elect, Greg Abbott, right now. Did so much to move our state forward. The people of Texas have spoken, and I am deeply honored to be your next governor. Earlier tonight, I received a telephone call from Senator Davis. Congratulating me on the victory tonight. I thanked her and I told her what I want to tell you. Whether you voted for me, against me, or didn't vote at all, I'm going to work every single day to keep Texas the best state in the United States of America. I am so proud to have by my side my wife of 33 years, Cecilia. Who has now made Texas history as the first Hispanic first lady in the history of the great state of Texas. And we are so proud of our teenage daughter, Audrey. Through her eyes, I see the future generations of Texas, and it looks pretty good. Well, tonight, Texans sent a message. You voted for hope over fear, for unity over division for the majesty of what Texas is and what it can be. As Texans, as Texans, the bonds we share transcend our differences. We all want to live in safer communities, have greater opportunities, and to give all of our children lives worthy of their promise. You know, I am living proof. I am living proof. But a young man 
can have his life broken in half and still rise up to be the governor of this great state. And as governor, I will ensure that Texas remains a state that provides that brand of opportunity to every single Texan. As governor, I will build a better future for the next generation. Nothing is more important than providing our children the education they need for the jobs of tomorrow. The opportunity to succeed should not be confined to just one side of town. It should be the birthright of every Texas child. I want our schools to be the best in the United States of America. There, is, there are no second-class dreams, and there should be no second-rate schools. As governor, I will keep Texas number one in the nation for creating jobs. We will do that by keeping government small, by keeping taxes low, and ensuring that regulations are reasonable. You know what? Contrary to what some people say, businesses do, in fact, create jobs. Texas gets that. Texas understands that government is supposed to be the servant of the people, not the other way around. And as your governor, I will ensure we live up to that principle. And as your governor, I will do what the federal government has failed to do. I will secure our border and enforce the rule of law in the state of Texas. But now more than ever, it is a time for Texans to unite to achieve these goals. Because as Texas goes, so goes America. And as America goes, so goes the world. Now more than ever, we must show that Texas-style conservative leadership provides real solutions to the problems Texans face. Better schools more opportunity, safer communities. These priorities are more and bigger than any one single political party because we are Texans first, and as your governor, I will put Texas first. Now I want to thank so many people who made tonight possible. We would not be here without the work of so many of our fellow Texans, some of whom are with us here in the room tonight. RGV. Has been well represented in this election. But the, these volunteers who've worked tirelessly you all know that we've had a mantra. And that's our governor-elect there, Greg Abbott, winning tonight over Wendy Davis. We heard from Wendy Davis earlier. Of course, she was thanking her crowd of people for all the support that she got and, of course, running and being able to run for the governor of Texas. Yeah. But the governor's seat staying red tonight. And uh, Greg Abbott tapping into the emotions in our hearts tonight. One of the things he said, you can become governor. This is coming from a man whose life was completely broken in half. Yeah. And he then grows on to become the governor 
of Texas. That's right. Also, you know, speaking about to me, him talking about his kind of strategy taking office, talked about his emphasis on schools, securing the border, and even the crowd getting into it there about five minutes in, starting to chant <laughs> Abbott. So obviously supporters and uh, with him there, as well as his wife and his daughter uh, joining him there at the podium. So very interesting to hear from him right after results coming in that he is the governor-elect of the state of Texas. And the first Hispanic uh, first lady. Right. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Making history. Yeah. How about that? Oh, doing a lot. All right. Uh, we've got a little weather to talk about. Let's hit some headlines real quick and get you guys back to the numbers. Uh, take a look at the radar. We are looking at the, all of this rain moving out, so a drier forecast for tomorrow. We may hang on to some clouds early, a little bit of fog, but we're going to have a warmer day tomorrow, and then it gets even better by the weekend. We're going to talk about this and more coming up in weather. Make some improvements. Decision to make tonight on their ballot, allowing for beer and wine sales at grocery stores and gas stations. We have the results coming up. To see all your local results again, head to our election coverage on our website. That's PermiBasin360.com. Listen to Big Two News updates weekday mornings beginning at 6 a.m. on Classic Hits 97 Gold.